Hello everyone, uh, I hope everything is well with you. Uh, this is just a short video uh, on Iranian genetics. Uh, you know, for those of you who don't really uh, have a background in uh, the genetics field or have difficult a difficult time rather understanding uh, my previous videos because of the denseness of the uh, of the content. So in this video, I'll just uh, do a short uh, 10 minute uh, summary of uh, everything I've uh, said about Iranian genetics before, and I'll make it very easy to understand. And I'll again be using uh, just the PCA that. I have from uh, the Witski, so please do keep an eye on that. But yeah, don't worry, it will be similar, summarized rather. And I may also add a bit about haplogroups at the end as well, but that's really not important when we're talking about uh, Iranian genetics on an autosomal level, level rather. But before I begin, I will say this, and I'll make it clear that there is currently 90 to 95 percent genetic continuity in the majority of the contemporary Iranian population since the Iron Age, and Arab, Mongol, Turkic. Influences rather do not exceed more than 10% are and are at average at around 5%. And this is definitely something worth keep taking into account here because many individuals think that contemporary Iranians are largely admixed with the Arabs, Turks, and Mongols, but the reality is that none of this is true. Now, uh, already highlighted on this PCA are contemporary Tajiks as well as the early Iranian sample, which is closest to the uh, to the uh, Yagnobi people. But before I get into this, I'll just uh, get into the uh, genetic history of Iran. And uh, by Iran, I mean contemporary Iran and not uh, greater Iran. So I won't discuss the genetics of the Afghans or the Tajiks in this uh, particular video, but I may cover it in another uh, future video. And uh, this video was just requested by another, uh, rather a user of mine, and I really thank him for it. And uh, I'm, it's unfortunate that I didn't really make something like this before, but I definitely should have uh, done so because I think many Iranians really have a difficulty understanding and interpreting uh, most of my uh, most of the information rather that I present in my videos. Oh, sorry, uh, I meant follower, not user. <laughs> sorry about that. Anyways, uh, let's get into it now. So. Basically, the original uh, inhabitants uh, of Iran were uh, Neolithic Iranian farmers, which are highlighted here. And these farmers were the first. They, they emerged uh, in Iran around 8000 BCE. And, uh, you know, there were hunter-gatherers before this, but these were the first major farmers in Iran. And they formed the bulk of the contemporary Iranian genome uh, between around... Uh, 40 to 50 percent of uh, the contemporary Iranian genome comes from these farmers and uh, they were the first uh, population in Iran rather the first agrarian population in Iran now they were not Iranic speakers as uh, the Iranic uh, languages did not come to Iran until until the uh, emergence of the uh, Iranic uh, the early Iranics in Central Asia but before I get to that I discuss the next uh, major uh, population in Iran and you know these farmers uh, formed around uh, 5000 to 3000 BCE between that range and they were the Chalcolithic Iranians and they emerged by admixing with the, the uh, Chalcolithic Anatolians who are highlighted here as well. So these uh, Neolithic Iranians admixed with the Chalcolithic Anatolians to form the uh, Chalcolithic Iranians who formed their own cluster here and these Chalcolithic Iranians account for around 65 to 70 percent of the contemporary Iranian genome and these uh, farmers uh, were the inhabitants of uh, what is today Iran before the migration of the early Iran and they were very, you know, they achieved a lot. I mean, they were responsible for the Elamite civilization as well as the Gutian people and many of these pre-Iranic Iranian populations largely and likely resemble these individuals like right here, these Chalcolithic Iranians highlighted here. Now, uh, moving on, uh, there was another uh, population uh, which was critical here and that was the people of the BMAC culture. So the BMAC culture were one of this was one of the major uh, cultures in Central Asia prior to the migration of the, uh, you know, a, rather it was responsible for the formation of the early Iranics, but it existed before them as well. And the BMAC people were highly urbanized and they had a very strong culture, a strong material culture and their formation the genetically rather, they were largely of Neolithic Iranian stock, though they did have minor Chalcolithic Iranian as well as uh, admixture from uh, steppe pastoralists 
the Yamnaya steppe pastoralists who emerged on the Pontic Caspian steppe and they're highlighted here as well as you can see they're at the top uh, there you know these uh, Yamnaya uh, pastoralists admixed uh, partially uh, to a short degree with these uh, individuals of uh, the BMAC culture and uh, by the time of the early Iranics these, these were the people living in the region now the Iranic uh, languages originated with uh, another population and these were the people of the Andronovo horizon and they're highlighted here they cluster closest to contemporary uh, northern Europeans though uh, by the time they reached uh, Central Asia they hybridized with the, the native populations of the BMAC again highlighted here to form the early Iranic which is highlighted right there in the center and these uh, early Iranics clustered closest to contemporary Yagnobis they were not Nordics as uh, many uh, foolishly uh, claim such as uh, Jason Reza Georgiani rather uh, they were not even Germanics these early Iranics clustered contempo with contemporary Yagnobis and were a hybrid population of BMAC uh, farmers and steppe pastoralists that's all uh, you really need to know at this point in time, uh, these uh, BMAC uh, peoples, uh, rather these uh, early Iranics migrated to Iran and mixed with the native Chalcolithic farmers already present there, spread the Iranian language and this was at around uh, 1000 BC where you had the migration of the Persians, uh, the Bactrians, not Bactrians, sorry, but the Persians, the Medians and other Iranic uh, tribes into the Iranian plateau. They mixed with the natives of the region who were largely of Chalcolithic Iranian stock to form the modern day Iranians and contemporary Iranians are around 90 to 95 percent similar to this population, uh, you know, this uh, hybrid population which has uh, long existed in Iran since the Iron Age and uh, the contemporary Iranian population is largely derived from uh, the Chalcolithic uh, Iranians as well as this early Iranic uh, migrant, these early Iranic migrants and there is around 90 to 95 percent genetic continuity in Iran since the Iron Age. So again uh, contemporary Iranians are highlighted here and I've also highlighted now the Iron Age Iranians. So you can clearly see that the contemporary Iranians are not at all different from the population living there and uh, I've highlighted Saudi Arabs here as well and uh, you can clearly see that Iranians are not Arabs and have a great deal of genetic difference from Arabs and actually a few southern European populations are closer genetically to the Saudis than uh, you know than they are than Iranians are to the Saudis so that's very interesting as well but Iran has had very little influence of uh, you know of uh, these Arab invaders or even Mongol or Turkic influence which exceeds no more than uh, three four percent or even South Asian influence which exceeds no more than five percent so overall uh, in the general Iranian population there is 90 to 95 percent genetic continuity Arab uh, admixture is very limited and uh, you can clearly see here that uh, contemporary Iranians cluster right where they should you know that's pretty clear from this uh, chart. I'm not really going to get into the paternal haplogroup situation in Iran but uh, what is clear you know I've covered this before I don't think it's really necessary but what is clear is that uh, there the pr primary haplogroups found in Iran are uh, J, J, haplogroup J2 which is found at 24 percent this is from the natives Agrosian Iranian farmers and uh, haplogroup uh, R which is found at 27 percent and of this R1A is found at around 20 to 22 percent and this is the uh, haplogroup of the early Iranics and uh, yeah that's pretty much it uh, the Arab Semitic haplogroup uh, J1 is only found at, in Iranians at around uh, 5 to 8 percent and even then most of this actually isn't from Arabs it's from pre-historic uh, Semitic migration actual Arab and mixture is solely restricted to Awaz and parts of south uh, western Iran and uh, the majority of the Iranian population has no more than uh, two or three uh, Arab and mixture at the most and uh, a final thing I just like to show is uh, the admixture uh, in Iranians based on two of my friends and I calculated this using David's uh, global 25 calculator so the first one is Dariush Ashkani and he's another very uh, prominent uh, youtuber you should definitely check out his videos and here you can see that clearly most of his uh, ancestry is uh, derived from native Iranian population such as uh, the Haji Firuz Chalcolithic cluster and uh, all of these are pretty much uh, native populations with the exception of uh, the Natufian which is minor uh, Semitic related input which is very small here only around 1% as well as uh, the uh, minor uh, South Asian uh, related admixture which is represented here by the Shahri Sohta 
cluster and uh, that's only around uh, eight, you know, seven, eight percent. Most of that is actually uh, from uh, ne Neolithic era migrants from the Indus Valley civilization to Iran and uh, there is very little actual uh, South Asian admixture in, in Iran present at the moment. Even half of that, uh, 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 rather half of that uh, Shahri Sohta admixture is actually uh, Neolithic Iranian so really uh, Daryush has around 93-94% genetic continuity. The other individual is actually a, another uh, good uh, you know he's a recent subscriber of mine but you should definitely uh, check out his channel it's called a cute cat critic and here are his results and his results uh, show around 98% uh, genetic continuity he only has a minor amount of uh, East Asian admixture, uh, you know, only uh, around uh, uh, the uh, numbers around uh, two to three percent, and that's it. And around 98 percent genetic continuity he has. Around 35 percent of his ancestry is from early Iranic migrants, compared to around 23 uh, percent for Daryush, as I previously showed. And the remainder is largely native. So this individual has 98 percent genetic continuity. How about that? And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it uh, for this video. So please do subscribe, like, and share. And I think this is a very easy video to understand for most Iranians. So please do share this video with your uh, friends and uh, spread the word about my channel. Thank you and take care.